Hey everybody, welcome to Vacuum Wars. So there's a lot of Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals out there, and it can be pretty confusing trying to figure out which robot vacuum is the best one for your exact situation and budget. Since I've tested and reviewed a whole lot of iRobot's products, iRobot asked for my help in assisting people to make the right choice for their homes. In this video, I'll walk you through iRobot's current Roomba robot vacuum and Brava Jet line, and explain all the technical sounding specs and features, and recap some of my personal experiences. I also have it on good authority from iRobot that there will be some great offers across their line this holiday season, so links in the description for current prices, and let's get started. Let's start off by talking just about the robot vacuums. I have them lined up here from least to most expensive, the 675 being the cheapest, and the Roomba S9 Plus being the most expensive. There are certain qualities and features that all these Roombas have. For example, every single Roomba has the patented tube brush roll design that makes Roombas basically under paralleled with cleaning carpets. If you look at other types of robot vacuums on the market, you'll find that they have one brush. Roombas have two. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but what I've found in deep clean test after deep clean test is that even the cheapest Roombas like the 675 outperform high-end robots from other brands with carpet deep cleaning. It's a huge advantage and every Roomba has it and others don't. More similarities include basic features like drop sensors. They all have them and they prevent them from falling downstairs. They also so all automatically return to their charging dock automatically. They all have a feature called Dirt Detect, which is a sensor that can tell when they're vacuuming a particularly dirty area, and so they will give it extra attention. All the robots on this list are Wi-Fi enabled, meaning that you can control them even when you are away from your house with your smartphone, with which you can also schedule cleanings. They are also all able to be controlled with voice commands using Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. There are a lot of other app features that only the more expensive Roombas have, have, but we'll get to that in a minute. The final things I'll say before we move on to their differences is that they're all really sturdy. They're really well-built machines that do their job, which is picking up debris from hard floors and carpets really well. They all have a one-year warranty, and there's a huge selection of parts, filters, brushes, and all those things available for sale, which is really convenient and not as common with other brands as you might think. Let's move on to talking about their differences now, so you can find out why you might choose one of these over another. Starting off with the hardware. One of the most obvious physical things that make these different from one another is that three of these Roombas can be used with iRobot's clean base, which is an automatic bin emptying system where when the robot returns to the clean base, a motor in the base automatically kicks in and it sucks the contents of the dustbin into the clean base. iRobot says these bags can hold up to 60 days worth of debris before needing to be replaced, and I think it's just a game-changing feature that for me takes the experience of having a robot vacuum to a whole new level. You can buy the i3, i7, or s9 separately without the clean base, or you can buy the robot and the clean base together, which is where the plus in the name comes from. So for example, the i7 plus is the i7 plus the clean base, and so on. Another hardware difference is the suction power. iRobot measures suction in relationship to the standard suction of their 600 series, like that of the 675. They say, for example, that the E5 has five times more suction than the 600 series. The i3 and the i7 have 10 times more, and the S9 has a whopping 40 times more. Now, part of what I do here at Vacuum Wars is test these vacuums in various ways, and in my experience, while you can notice a very slight difference in the cleaning performance between these robots because of the suction difference, it's not as though the 675 isn't powerful enough to do the job. In fact, in my test, the 675 outperforms robots two or even three times its price because of that two brush system that I mentioned earlier. Really, the main difference I've noticed about suction at all is with the S9 because of that huge 40 times suction number. To this day, I've not seen a robot vacuum come anywhere close to the S9 test results with regard to carpet cleaning. The S9 is also the only Roomba that has a different shape designed for improved corner cleaning. Also, its main brushes are about 30% wider than any other Roomba, so it has a bigger cleaning path, and so it cleans faster in fewer passes. There's a few more hardware differences that apply just to the 675. For example, it's the only one on this list that has a standard filter as opposed to a high efficiency filter. The 675 is also the only one on this list that has the older style brush rolls with the bristles as opposed to the newer style main brushes, which are a little better at resisting hair tangles. One of the biggest differences though between the cheaper Roombas and the more expensive Roombas is the way that they navigate around your house. The Roomba 675 and the E5 both operate using reactive navigation, where they use various sensors like their bumper and IR sensors as well as an algorithm.
algorithm to clean more or less randomly. Whereas the i3 through the S9 all use various technologies to navigate in nice, neat rows. But more on that later. One thing to point out is that the reactive navigation is actually pretty efficient for what it is. I've tested Roomba's random navigation over their smart navigation several times and in different ways, and the cheaper random bots usually achieve the same near 100% coverage of a single room in about the same time as the expensive ones. The reactive navigation bots like the 675 and E5 will also navigate to multiple rooms in your house on their own, which they do by making turns in a specific way. So it may seem random, but it's actually pretty smart at getting around obstacles and getting where it needs to go. The next three robots, the i3, i7, and s9, as I said, all navigate by cleaning in more or less straight lines. The big difference here is that they create and use maps of the house. The main benefit of this, besides ensuring better coverage in every room for every cleaning, is that the robot knows where it has and hasn't cleaned in your house. So it will systematically clean the house and it won't stop until it's cleaned every area of every room. Even if its battery runs out before it's finished, it will return to the base to recharge and then resume cleaning right where it knows it left off. It basically makes battery life irrelevant for these higher end robots. The 675 and E5 do not create a map, and so they have a fixed 90 minutes or so to clean as much of the house as they can. If you have a smaller area or an apartment, it's usually more than enough time to do that, but if you have a larger space or you just want to ensure perfect coverage every time, then you probably want either the i3, i7, or s9. The final thing I'll say on navigation is regarding the difference between the i3, the i7, and the s9. The more expensive ones, the i7 and s9, use cameras to create an interactive map, what iRobot calls a smart map of your house, which unlocks a ton of advanced features. The i3 will also systematically navigate, but it does so without a camera, which means it doesn't support certain features enabled by imprint smart mapping, like directed room cleaning and virtual keepout zones. However, like all systematic Roomba vacuums, the i3 does produce a clean map report with details of the cleaning job once it's finished cleaning. The i3 is the perfect option if you want the clean base and you want the systematic row by row navigation and all that comes with that, but you don't need all the super advanced app features that requires a camera to activate. Speaking of the app, let's talk about the newly redesigned iRobot app features. One of my absolute favorite new features is called Keepout Zones. This is where after the robot maps out your house, you can draw virtual boxes on the map, which will keep the robot from going places that you don't want it to go. In my experience, most houses have places where there's a lot of cords or clutter, and these keep out zones are an amazing feature that I think makes a huge difference in user experience, and I personally use them a lot. But it's one of those app features that are only available for robots with cameras, like the i7, S9, and even the M6, which we will get to in a minute. The most recent updates on the app, though, is something called iRobot Genius, and it allows you to have an exceptional amount of control and customization. For example, not only can you designate the robot to clean a certain room only, like you could tell the robot to go clean the kitchen, but you could also designate certain areas within a room. So you could tell the robot to go clean around the kitchen table or go clean in front of the living room couch. This can all integrate with the scheduling features too. You could, for example, set a schedule to clean certain areas one day and other areas another day. But part of the genius of iRobot Genius is that it learns a lot of this on its own and automatically recommends things. For example, it might send you a notification with a recommendation about placing a keep out zone in a problem area, or it might suggest that based on your cleaning habits, you should add a scheduled cleaning based on those past jobs. One big change is a new kind of integration into smart homes. For example, you can set it to communicate with your door locks or thermostats to begin a job when you leave the house. All of this means you get some seriously detailed customization options. The sky is the limit on this, really. There are some aspects of the iRobot Genius app features that apply to some of these other robots as well. For example, the app will remind all of these Roombas about seasonal changes like pollen season and pet shedding season, and it will recommend job schedules accordingly. Also, the i3 as well as the i7 and s9 integrate with the iRobot Brava Jet M6 mopping robot with something called Imprint Link, where when the robot finishes its job, it will send a signal to the Brava Jet mop 
and then it will automatically begin its mopping job. And that brings us to the final two items in this buyer's guide, the BravaJet M6 and the S9 Plus M6 bundle in Midnight Black. So the BravaJet M6 is iRobot's most advanced mopping robot. To get started, you fill its tank with water, attach one of the included mopping pads, it sprays a small jet of water on the floor in front of it, and systematically mops the floors. It has sensors that automatically avoid rugs and carpets, and it has the same basic camera-based navigation system seen on the i7 and S9. So it navigates room by room, row by row, systematically mopping your house. It has all kinds of adjustments you can make in the app for water levels and such. And in my tests, I found it to be incredibly good at cleaning up even very difficult dried on stains. Also, because it has a camera, you can set up keep out zones, designate rooms and areas within a room, basically all those iRobot genius app features we mentioned before. The S9 Plus M6 Midnight Black Bundle is the last item on our list, and it includes the S9 Plus and an all-new black version of the BravaJet M6, which is pretty aesthetically pleasing, I must say. Essentially, this bundle represents the most advanced robots in iRobot's lineup. You get the S9 with the clean base and the new black M6. Check out all the links in the description for current prices. Thanks to iRobot for sponsoring this buyer's guide, and thank you for watching.